Hello everybody and welcome to my channel today. Today we're moving on with more kitchen staples and flavorings in the kitchen. And today we're going to be talking about vinegars and condiments. So let's get started. So vinegar is a sour liquid that's made through the process of fermentation. The fermentation of alcohol and other raw ingredients. And one of the requirements is those raw ingredients contain natural sugars. Ingredients containing natural sugars that are most commonly used for vinegar include fruit such as apples, black currants, raspberry, quinces, and tomatoes grains, alcoholic beverages, and other fermented material. All of this can be turned into vinegar. That's why you see a lot of different kinds of vinegars on the market. Making vinegar usually requires a mother, which is a term in vinegar making used to describe a biofilm composed of a form of cellulose and acidic acid bacteria that develops on fermenting alcoholic liquids. Vinegar is a very important ingredient in many cultures, including European cultures and Asian cultures, as well as being a really important ingredient in condiments. Historical texts mention the use of vinegars dating back to 5000 BCE. Vinegar has been produced from a variety of sources over the years, and those include molasses, dates, sorghum, fruits, berries, melons, coconut, honey, beer, maple syrup. Romans, Greeks, and people in central, southern Mesopotamia and parts of Syria use it for a variety of purposes outside the kitchen. During the American Civil War, Vinegar was used to fight off scurvy, and as recently as World War I was used for treating wounds. Vinegar has so many purposes outside of the kitchen, and here are a few of them, or maybe most of them. Vinegar has been used as a folk remedy, natural house cold cleaning products, such as use on spraying on mirrors for a streak free reflection and cleaning coffee makers and tea kettles has also been used as an herbicide and as a beverage. You can use it to spray on kitchen counters to keep ants away, freshen carpets, wash walls, woodwork and blinds, unclog drains, clean garbage disposals, clean kitchen surfaces exposed to raw meat, clean bathroom surfaces, clean chrome fixtures and sinks, remove lime and hard water deposits from faucets and shower heads. It gets rid of unwanted grass, it freshens air and removes odors, it removes glass water rings on wood furniture, it softens a hardened paintbrush, and it unclogs steam irons. As far as culinary uses go, it is used in pickling and preserving, making marinades and dressings, and other sauces such as condiments like mustard, ketchup, and mayonnaise, and is an essential component of chutneys and other sauces. It was commonly used as a condiment and a preservative because vinegar enabled food to be transported for long journeys. There are a number of different kinds of vinegars with a variety of different flavors, but they all should have a clean, sharp flavor. The stronger the acid content, the sharper of flavor it will impart. The US FDA requires any product being called vinegar to contain at least 4% acidity. Among the many types of vinegar, the most common is white distilled vinegar. Distilled vinegar is neutral. Most common uses include pickling and brines, ketchups and salad dressings. Distilled vinegar does not discolor a recipe. This is the number one vinegar in America as it can pull double duty when mixed with baking soda and become a very powerful natural cleaning agent. Another popular vinegar is wine vinegar, which is either white or red wine vinegar. And this is the preferred vinegar for dressings. White wine vinegar is suitable for pickling and for elevating lighter vinaigrettes and is made from white wine. Red wine vinegar is very popular in the United States and is made from fermented red wine. Champagne vinegar is great as a condiment or in a dressing, but is not as useful in cooking applications. It's lighter and less impactful and more mellow than its counterparts. As the name implies, it is made from fermented champagne. Next, there's cane vinegar which is fermented cane juice. Good quality cane vinegar will be aged in oak barrels. This vinegar is most common in Filipino cooking. Malt vinegar is created from barley that is brewed into beer, so it's malty, and then fermented and aged briefly. Malt vinegar is most commonly used as a condiment for fish and chips by people in England, and it is deliciously used so. And actually, malt vinegar doesn't qualify as an actual vinegar. 
because its acetic acid component is obtained directly by distilling wood chips, bypassing the first ethanol producing stage. Apple cider vinegar, aside from its unique taste, is a vinegar purported to have a variety of health benefits from soothing a sore throat to weight loss. Apple cider vinegar is made from fermented apples. It's great for dressings and marinades and is actually the number two vinegar in the United States. Rice wine vinegar is made from fermenting rice wine. It is Chinese in origin. It is less acidic and less harsh than white wine. It's most suitable for Asian inspired dipping sauces and grilling marinades. It's similar in taste to apple cider vinegar. Rice vinegar is sweeter and should not be confused with rice wine vinegar. Rice vinegar is made from fermenting the sugar from rice into alcohol and removing the acid. It is sweeter and more mild. Red rice vinegar is a vinegar popular in Chinese cooking. This vinegar is cultivated with a red mold to give it its red color. Black vinegar, also known as this kind of vinegar, and I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Black vinegar is a sour component in any number of dishes found in Southern China. In the United States, it is probably most commonly recognized as a dipping sauce for dumplings. It's made from the glutinous rice or sorghum. This vinegar has a smoky or toasty woody flavor. Flavored wines are just wines that have been flavored with any number of ingredients from herbs and spices to fruits and vegetables, anything that you can infuse into a basic uh, mild flavored vinegar. Next we have sherry vinegar. Sherry is made from a fortified Spanish wine that has been aged in oak barrels for six months. It's great in vinaigrettes and for deglazing and making a quick pan sauce. Balsamic vinegar is the king of fermented spirits. By not being a fermented spirit. The Cadillac of vinegars, if you will. This vinegar is made from a specific variety of grapes that are crushed and then aged in oak barrels. The more aged, the more expensive the vinegar. Best uses of balsamic vinegar is as a condiment for drizzling atop savory dishes or desserts, or combined with a good olive oil for a spectacular dressing. My favorite use of balsamic vinegar is fresh sliced tomatoes from the garden, layered with fresh basil and fresh mozzarella and then drizzled with oil and balsamic vinegar and just sprinkled with a little sea salt. And to round off the topic, as always, storage. It's important to keep your vinegars away from direct light, stored in a cool, dry place, kept in its original container and with its lid replaced immediately after using. So that's vinegar. And as mentioned, vinegar is a very prominent ingredient in condiments. And condiments aren't just used like as a side. Condiments are often used as an ingredient. Condiments are used to alter and enhance the flavor during cooking or are added to complete a dish at the end of cooking by the consumer. Condiment use dates back to the ancient world of Rome, India, Greece, and China. There are many types of condiments, and this is more of a difficult one because condiments and sauces kind of butt up against each other, and sauces is going to be a completely different series coming out, I believe, um, at the beginning of next year, maybe at the end of this year. So this is just like as close to the condiment list without going too far into a sauce as I could provide. Prepared mustard will be the first that I'll discuss. Prepared mustard is a mix of mustard seed, vinegar or wine, salt, and other spices. It can come in a variety of flavors by the addition of herbs like horseradish, onions, pepper. It can come in grainy or smooth. Dijon mustard is named after a town called Dijon in Burgundy, France. Dijon mustard is not regulated like in the same way that champagne is regulated, but if you want to have authentic Dijon mustard, make sure it comes from the Burgundy region of France, known as the Cote d'Or. The authentic Dijon mustard is made with mustard seeds from that same region. Grape Pond Mustard is made with brown mustard seed grown in Canada. 
Relishes are cooked and pickled product made of chopped vegetables, fruits, pickles, or herbs. And is a food item typically used as a condiment to enhance a staple. It is frequently finely cut vegetables or fruit in sour, sweet and sour, or a spicy sauce. There are a number of simple relishes, including and not limited to jalapeno pepper relish, hot pepper relish, onion relish, cranberry, and tomato relish. When it comes to homemade relishes, the possibilities are endless. Next we have the bottled sauce category of condiments. There are hundreds of bottled sauces on the grocery store shelves and this is just going to be um, a little overview of the most common types and we're going to start with ketchup. Three tomatoes are walking down the street. Papa tomato, mama tomato, and baby tomato. Baby tomato starts lagging behind and Papa tomato gets really angry. Goes back and squishes in. Says ketchup. Ketchup is a common ingredient in kitchens and is made with red ripe tomatoes, distilled vinegar, sugar, salt, spices, including onion powder. The best ketchup will have limited ingredients and no high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, or corn derived solids, or thickening agents, and will have limited added sugar. Ketchup began its life as a Chinese fish sauce called Ketsiap, with tomatoes being added to the ingredients in the 18th century. Next we have black and yellow fermented bean sauce, also known as yellow bean paste or fermented yellow soybean paste. This sauce is made from fermented soybeans, as its name implies. Fish sauce is made from fish or krill that have been coated in salt and fermented for a couple months, up to two years. Worcestershire sauce is a very popular fermented condiment made from a base of vinegar and flavored with anchovies, molasses, tamarind, onions, garlic, and other seasonings. It was developed in 1835 by two chemists from Worcester named Leop and Perrins. It now comes in gluten-free and low sodium versions. Worcester is used in many different ways as a condiment and as a cooking ingredient in the kitchen. One notable way is adding it to sauces. It is used as an ingredient in marinades and brush onto meats, fish, or poultry as it is grilled, fried, or baked. It can be used in steaming and stir frying of vegetables. It can be used as a condiment on sandwiches or shellfish or as a seasoning for salads. It's used in soups and stews for seasoning and adding savoriness. I use this product a lot. Um, Recently, I saw a tweet that says, who even needs to buy more than one bottle of Worcester in your whole life? And I actually purchased mine two large bottles at a time from Costco. So I guess I'm one of those people that needs more than one bottle to survive on. I most commonly use it when I'm making like sloppy joes and stuff to low quality beef to sort of uh, boost the flavor. When I get locally sourced ground beef, I don't use as much Worcester because the meat just tastes better and doesn't need to be like covered up with anything. Then we have barbecue sauce. Everybody loves barbecue sauce and there are a number of different types. Barbecue sauce is used as a marinade for basting, as a condiment or topping for cooked meat. This condiment is made from vinegar, tomato paste, as well as liquid smoke, onion powder, spices such as mustard and black pepper, and sweeteners such as sugar or molasses. The best barbecue sauce is with any condiment that contains a sugar component will have no high fructose corn syrup, no corn solids, or corn derived fillers, solids, or thickening agents. In addition, the best barbecue sauce from a health perspective will have a small amount of sugar. Then we have chili sauce and sriracha sauce. In culinary school, sriracha sauce was used like ketchup on everything by all the culinary students. I'm not sure why, um, but it was the condiment choice of culinary students when I was in culinary school. Sriracha is made from tomato paste, vinegar, herbs, garlic, and other seasonings, but most importantly, chili peppers. Hoi Fong brand chili sauce is the most recognized store brand of this condiment. And we have hoisin sauce. And hoisin sauce is a thick, sweet sauce made from fermented soybeans. It has sugar added to it, as well as white distilled vinegar, garlic, red chili peppers, and other spices. Then we have oyster sauce. When it comes to oyster sauce, the darker the sauce, the higher quality of the sauce. High quality oyster sauce is naturally dark. Low quality soy sauce has additives in it to make it dark. So it's again, important to look at that ingredient list. 
Oyster sauce is darkened with caramel coloring. This sauce is made of oyster extracts, oyster juice, water, sugar, salt, and thickened with cornstarch. Then we have pick a pepper. Pick a pepper is a Jamaican sauce and condiment that is simmered and reduced in copper pots then aged in oak barrels. The ingredients include Western Indian red peppers, cane vinegar, sugar, onions, raisins, cloves, ginger, and mango, in addition to other ingredients. Pick a pepper is used with seafood, salads, gravies, and cheese dips, soups, meats, game roasts, and more. Tabasco. Tabasco was created in 1868 in Louisiana, United States. It is made of vinegar, tobacco peppers, and salt. It is a specific type of hot sauce invented by Edmund McHenry. There are a number of other sauces similar to Tabasco on the market and they include Frank's Red Hot, which is made using cayenne pepper and other hot sauces that can achieve their unique flavors by the type of chili pepper used, like ghost, habanero, chipotle, and jalapeno. Soy sauce is a very popular Chinese condiment. It is made from the fermented paste of soybeans, roasted grain, usually wheat, brine, and one of two specific types of mold comes in low sodium and gluten-free versions. Pickled vegetables are also considered a condiment. These condiments are preserved vegetables, like fruits and their rinds, preserved in vinegar and brine. Common and sometimes popular ingredients that can be pickled include beets, eggs, cucumbers, onions, jalapenos, cauliflower, carrots, peppers, lemon peel, cherries, peaches, plums, berries, raisins, meats like pork or parts of pork, chicken gizzards, herring, and other fish. Pickled items can be an ingredient or an accompaniment to many dishes and the possibilities are near limitless in things that can be pickled. Pickled vegetables should not be confused with the type of pickling that leads to dill flavored things. Some notable condiments that are fairly new include pesto, which was invented in 16th century Italy, mayonnaise, the first mention of the emulsion we now know as mayonnaise comes from an 1820 work by Chef Alexander Veard. Modern tartar sauce was invented in the 1800s. Condiments have been created and evolved throughout the entirety of human history. Condiments in ancient times would be a very good way to mask the flavor of um, different meats that may not be super fresh in a similar way that herbs and spices were used um, to mask flavors of meat and, and food that was a little less than fresh. And we end with storage as usual. And so storage for condiments can vary depending on the type of condiment. Things such as Worcester sauce, like highly vinegar based things don't need to be refrigerated. Ketchup does not need to be refrigerated. Unopened condiments that were not found in a refrigerated area of the store can be stored in a cool dark place on a shelf until open. Some condiments are shelf stable after opening, which means they don't have to be refrigerated. Examples include ketchup, soy sauce, oyster sauce, fish sauce, honey, and hot sauce and as mentioned, Worcester sauce. Those that contain dairy, vegetables, and fruits need to be refrigerated. So basically we have to think about if it's got a lot of vinegar, a lot of salt in it, and a lot of sugar, those are all preservatives. So if it's just mostly those kind of ingredients, it's likely that it doesn't need to be refrigerated. I think that's all there is today for vinegar and condiments. If you know of a condiment that I left out that you love, please leave me a note in the comments section below. I'd love to learn about it. Thank you for watching my video. And as always, have a wonderful day. Red white, red white, red white. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire. I said it right one time. Worcester sauce or Worcestershire. Worcestershire. There are a very, uh, there are a variety of other hot sauces similar to that to 